Good morning everybody, good morning class. Today we are going to be looking at the wave particle paradox. And in this wave particle paradox, I just wanted to take note of two things. This wave and the particle. Because they are the things that are involved in it. So what this list guy says is that matter and light, they have wave properties and they also have particle properties. But if I don't have the subjects in terms of no one will see that when we are stating the wave particle reality principle. So, um, in, when Davison and um, Gamma were doing their experiment, they found out that they have, they have, um, electro, the electrons are emitted from a hot filament, we are impinged on a flat metal surface. And those electrons diffracted, after being impinged on that flat metal surface, they diffracted. And when they diffracted, the diffraction rings were now produced on the, on the photographic plate. So that the, remember that diffraction is a property of what a wave. So that was how they found out that they had wave properties. Let me give it to you in a diagram form so that you won't forget. Let's say this is the hot filament. This is the hot filament. They just take this to be the hot filament. Honestly, forget the drawing, but I'm just using it to explain. And these are the electrons that emitted from this hot filament. Let's just say this are the beam of electrons that emitted. And this beam of electrons now that we are emitted from this hot filament, we are now impinged on the flat metal surface. They were impinged on a flat metal surface. This is the flat metal surface. This is the flat metal surface. Let's take this to be the flat metal surface. And when they were now impinged on the flat metal surface, they are now diffracted. These electrons now diffracted. They diffracted as they spread. Remember that in diffraction it has to do with the spreading of light. And the diffraction rings are now produced on it. These are the diffraction rings. They were now what produced on a flat met on a photographic plate. Sorry. These diffraction rings. This is the photographic plate. Hmm? So this we, we know that this is the hot filament hot filament this is the beam of electrons beam of electrons this is the flat metal surface i'm just abbreviating it this is the flat metal surface and this is the diffraction uh, so the diffraction of the electrons fraction and these are the electron rings that are formed on this photographic plate these are the beam of electrons that are formed on the photographic plate. So that's it for this. And so now we have seen the wave nature of light and matter. Now we are going to move to the particle nature. In the particle nature, it has a statement. I will say it In the particle nature, you see that it has to do with the electric effect. And in terms of the electric effect, it just has to do with a beam of light. If a beam of light should should come to as in, if a beam of light should be placed on a metal surface, electrons are being emitted. That once a beam of light should impinge on a flat surface or uh, as a beam of light that's coming to just jam. Then you say it just jams a flat surface and it being just goes there. Electrons will emit. And that's the meaning of photoelectric effect. But let me now define. The electric effect, you can just say you can define that electrons, let me just put it this way maybe electrons are emitted when a beam of light hits the metal surface. And now, it will now tell us that in this particle nature, that there was a beam of light involved here. And where was that beam of light involved? The beam of light was involved in this hot filament too. Because for this beam of electrons to have been here, that means light hits this hot filament to have been able to produce it. So we we'll say that the beam of light, let's say this is the beam of light that came. Okay? Because the beam of light. The beam of light came to this um, hot filament, which enabled it to emit electrons. So now that these electrons we are emitted, it has explained what the photoelectric effect. And there are two effects that talk about the um, the particle nature of of light and matter. 
Another effect outside the photoelectric effect is the Compton effect. The Compton effect talks about where a Compton photon is moving and jams maybe a free electron that just on its own, it should hit it. That electron will recoil as if it was an, a perfectly elastic, elastic sphere. Let me give it to you in a diagram so you understand better. This is a, a Compton photon, the incident Compton, Compton photon now that is moving. Yeah, you just said, yeah, we know here yeah, the photoelectric effect. This side, but this whole place now is talking about the wave nature. We know that. The wave nature. So I'll just uh, give you the diagram of the Compton effect. Let's say a, the Compton photon is just going and jams a free electron. Let's say this is the free electron. This free electron now will do what? A recoil. And when it recoils, it will produce two, um, two electrons. One is it will produce a scattered photon. This is the scattered photon to produce. Scattered photon. And to also produce another um, electron. But that one is not a scattered photon. Now, that one is what a recoiling electron. I remember that I said that it will recoil as it was a perfectly elastic sphere. So, that recoiling photon after this collision here, you know there is a collision here because this is the incident Compton photon. Let me write it. This is the incident Compton photon. Now, so this one is the wave nature. This is the particle nature. There are two particle nature. This is the particle nature. This is also the particle nature. This part too. This part, as I explained earlier. And this particular one is the Compton effect. Let me write it. I just I don't know what Compton effect is. So this is the Compton effect. And this other um, this other electron that recoils after electron after collision, this is the recoiling electron after collision. So this is what you have to know about the photon. The total effect is just when an incident photon is going and hits or collides, I think that's a better, collides with a free electron. This is a free here now it's a free electron it's a free electron and it collides with it that electron now recoils as though it were a perfected electron so it will, when it's recoils it will produce a scattered photon that also produces a recoiling electron after collision so this is what the contour effect is all about as I said I repeat I said again that this incident photon it will move and when it meets a free when it collides with a free electron it will recoil as if it's a perfectly elastic sphere and once it does that it must produce a scattered photon and the recoiling electron after collision so those are the two things you have to know about the particle nature of light and matter remember in the wave nature it will show you a property of a wave, which is diffraction, and in the Compton and photoelectric effect, which is just this side, this place now, from here, this is the photoelectric effect. It will show you the particle nature of light. Once it just produces electrons, it has already shown the particle nature, because electrons are also particles. Um, then after this, it's going to lead us into the wave particle duality principle. And with all these things I've explained here, it will not be difficult for you to know to state it. It says that lines, the wave particle duality principle says that lines and waves, light and matter show waves and particle properties. Hmm? But you have to find it more. I'm just putting it in a way you understand. 
So you can find a more simplified and a more elaborate definition or a way you put it. So I'm just giving it to you this way so you always remember it. It means that light and matter have wave and particle world properties. But they cannot, and that thing that you can add this side, they will know that you know what they are doing. You can add that. But they cannot do the two of them. They cannot show their properties simultaneously at the same time. Hmm? It will just here, it will show that it's a wave, and that is a show that it is a particle. That just for that. And that will also lead us to uncertainty principle. Some of you know your uncertainty principle. But I will still tell you, your uncertainty principle that states that it is impossible to accurately know the exact position of a particle or the momentum. The exact position or momentum of a particle. And for you to have seen that it is that impossible yet. So let me show you that it's an uncertainty. It's an uncertainty. So I know that you are able to understand this class. I just want you to know that that's all you have to know about the wave particle paradox. That's the only thing involved in so when you hear this word, wave particle paradox, let not your heart be troubled because it's very, very easy. That's as I explained earlier. Just once you have all these diagrams in your head, you'll be able to explain it, even in ten or more pages, depending on how you want, depending on how simplified you want your work to be. So this is just all you have to know about the wave particle paradox. Thank you. Like my page, comment, and subscribe. Bye.